In this video, I will show you how to do limited dependent variable models in SAS. Before you view it, please make sure that you have watched my other two videos called limited dependent variable models and limited dependent variable models example. So I have opened here the SAS program and I have already executed it and you can download the data uh, which is ambulatory expenditures, LIMDAP ambulatory expenditures and you can download the program from my website and follow along. I will show you how to do the Tobit, Truncated Regression and Heckman models. First let's go ahead and look at the data and we have ambulatory expenditures would be our dependent variable and notice that in this case we have a lot of zeros in the data and this is very typical in a sensor data set so that's why we would need to use these special uh, models and the independent variables would be three that I have selected age, whether or not the person is female and the total number of chronic conditions. So going back to the code here, um, the first thing we can do is proc means, read in the data, and put in all the variables here. And these are the means for the full sample, and then we can calculate means where ambulatory expenditures is positive. So we can calculate here the means for the truncated sample. So this one is the full sample or the censored sample because it has the zeros in there. And this one is the truncated one. So notice that the number of observation drops from 3,328 to 2,802. And likewise, the mean here of 1,386 is lower than this mean of 1,646. Why? because we don't have the zeros here in the truncated sample. So that's what boosts up the mean. So we can also calculate more detailed descriptive statistics using PROC univariate. And the variable would be uh, ambulatory expenditures. And we can do this again for the full or the sens uh, censored data and we can also do that for the truncated data where ambulatory expenditure is positive. So here's more detailed statistics and you can see here uh, the means are the same as we showed above but you can also see that the zeros are here and in the truncated sample we don't have the zeros anymore. They start at 1 and so on. So these are the lowest value of 1, 2, 2, 4, and 5, and so on. Okay, so the next thing that we're doing here is we're setting up the data, but we're creating a dummy variable, dy equals 1, if the ambulatory expenditure is positive and else dy equals 0. So we're creating a dummy variable, 0, 1 variable, based on whether or not we have 0, or positive ambulatory expenditures and we would need this later in the models. The first thing to do is um, then uh, to estimate an OLS regression model and that's done by PROC reg data equals data and for model we would use the ambulatory expenditures dependent variable and I put the three independent variables in here and these are the results here that we have all positive and significant effects. Then we can estimate the Tobit model, which is the correct way to do it, using the QLIM procedure. And model would be, you specify the dependent variable and independent variables. And you need to also say exogenous, put the dependent variable here, and then squiggly part censored and lower bound equals to zero. This means that we have zeros in the data for lower bound. Otherwise, you put UB upper bound equals 10,000 or something like that if your sample is censored from above. 
but this is important to point out here. And then we can also store the marginal effects into an out file called mfx and it's being generated right there. So how do we interpret those coefficients here? This is the Tobit or the sensor regression model and we would say here that for each additional year of age then the latent ambulatory expenditures would increase by $333. That's how you interpret this. And also you can see that the sigma parameter is also estimated and reported here, which is important in the Tobit model. The next thing to do is to calculate the mean marginal effect. And we could just look at the MFX read in this data and for the variables we would calculate the marginal effects. So these are here the marginal effects and again we have positive uh, marginal effects for the censored sample and we would say that again for each additional year of age we would have $213 increase in the actual value for the ambulatory expenditures. So now instead of doing one uh, Tobit model we can split it into a probit model and a truncated regression model. So the probit model would be just about the one step, the, the decision between zeros or positives and then the truncated regression would be for the decision of the positives. So the probit model is calculated with proc logistic and you have to put here descending otherwise the, the signs would be flipped. Model, you use the dy variable that we generated here which is now a 0, 1 variable. You include all your independent variable and link equals probit. So these are the probit model results and you would interpret that by saying that those that are older female and with more uh, chronic conditions are more likely to have positive ambulatory expenditures or B for them to have this dy equals 1. So now that we have done that we can calculate or estimate the truncated regression model and we could use ProQLim and we would need to specify where where the Ember expenses is positive. You list the model and you have to specify the endogenous variable that would be the dependent variable, squiggly part truncated and lower bound zero. So notice what is the difference between here for the truncated regression and here for the Tobit model. We have first of all we have to subset the sample only to the truncated part where we have the positive responses and second we need to specify that it's truncated instead of censored here. So that that is the difference here. So now for the uh, truncated for the truncated model these would be the results that we have here and we would say that people with higher age, female, and total number of chronic conditions would have higher values of ambulatory expenditures for those that have positive expenditures. Okay, so the last thing to do here is to show you how to calculate the Heckman selection model and this is accomplished by ProQLim, data equals data, model we have dy as the dependent variable uh, that would be for the selection equation and then we have three independent variables here and for the outcome equation we would have the ambulatory expenditures and the three independent variables and we have select dy equals one because it's only for them that this second e step is estimated so again the first step is a probit model that we're estimating and the second one is is a um, is the outcome model only for the positive values. So if you look here at the Heckman model and this one 
had a really hard time to get the values, uh, the standard errors for all of the variables. But these are the results from, from, a, from a binary model here that we have from a probit model. And here are the second step results for the outcome decision. So you can say that for those that have positive ambulatory expenditures, we have each additional year of age would bring $333 more in ambulatory expenditures. And finally, I have another uh, several lines of code here for the Tobit model that would estimate it using the life reg procedure. And you can just specify the model where ambulatory expenditures times dy equals zero, and that's how the model is actually specified. And you could run this as an alternative to the Tobit model that we had before. So this is all I had for the Tobit, truncated regression, and Heckman models. Thank you for watching.